what we're seeing in the context of the COVID pandemic is just the persistence of structural forms of racism and xenophobia. In countries across the world, you see that those who are most impacted are racial, ethnic, and, and national minorities, or else groups that are marginalized. And then transnationally, what people have described as vaccine apartheid, the allocation of access to vaccines, is, is dramatically differential, depending on whether you're in the global north or the global south. Oftentimes, the challenge is not the groups that are most directly impacted by race, racism or xenophobia, all of these, but it's the groups that are not. There is nobody who is not impacted by racism, xenophobia, and all of these structures. We saw last year, after the murder of George Floyd, there was a way of thinking and talking about racism and, and in some places even xenophobia that approached a kind of global conversation. And I think it's important for us to ask why it is that there were people of all races, ethnicities, genders out on the streets all fighting for the same thing. I think part of it had to do with just how visceral um, the murder of George Floyd was and how much I think it reminded people of a kind of a shared humanity in a time when we had all been brought to a standstill because of the pandemic. When you think about revolutionary change, it is always led by youth because they are less invested in the status quo. And I think the areas where there is the most hopefulness is the ways in which young people have attempted to appropriate social media platforms, including for the purposes of pushing back against racism and xenophobia. And I think if we can involve young people in those kinds of conversations, we can see a completely different world. I went to law school in the United States um, as a last minute decision, actually. I spent most of my life thinking that I would be a doctor or an engineer or something like that. I've always been interested in, in human beings and in making the world one that is a more enjoyable place to live for everybody. Right now, my mandate is focused on, on racism and that was not something that I ever imagined. You know, with all of these categories that we are placed in, whether it's race, whether it's gender, whether it's disability status, whatever it is, we are who we are. And then society sort of inducts us into these categories because of the experiences that we have. And when it comes to racism and xenophobia, I think that's definitely my experience.